introduce our speaker today. He is a senior lecturer at UNIMAS. He has won several awards at national and international levels for various innovation in teaching and learning, as well as assistive technology. He was also the recipient of a UNIMAS Academic Award for the Teaching Award category in 2014 and a Best Learning Facilitator at International University E-Learning Carnival 2016. So let's welcome our speakers. Mr. Chua Kiman. Thank you, Shazalin. Um, hi, everyone. There's still people coming in with the doorbell. Um, anyway. Uh, wait, let me just. Okay. So, um, my session for today, I think we are the uh, session A, uh, where we are kickstarting Celeste 2020. Um, I, I know you might be wondering, you know, how do you go to other session? Uh, the other session will be recorded so you can join the other session through the website later. But um, for my session, I'll be focusing more on the, the tools. Some of the tools you might have, uh, you know, learned it throughout the, uh, you know, the couple of months before this. Um, but I would also like to share, you know, some best practices and some tips on using some, some of those tools. You know. You are free to ask me question. Maybe not now. Uh, you know, towards the end, then you can ask me question. I, I will not really talk a lot because I would like you to try some of the tools uh, that I'm going to introduce you in this particular session. So treat it like a workshop rather than like a talk. Right? Treat it like a like a like a workshop. All right. So let me share my screen now. Yeah, by the way, uh, just a quick teaser. If you stay towards the end, there's a mini quiz and then the organizer has prepared uh, 50 ringgit cash for three winners. So we have <laughs> we have uh, cash prizes to give out for three winners of the quizzes. So the quizzes, five questions only, will be based on my sharing. I think it should be easy for some of you. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's see. I'm going to share my screen now. Um, Just put it on share please. Wait. Okay. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Okay. Right, anything if you if you would like to talk, you just raise your hand. You can talk also. If you don't want to talk, then you can just type in the chat. I'll try my best to read the chat as we uh, as we proceed. There will be doorbell coming in and out. Uh, just ignore those. Those are not my sound. It's from the Zoom application. Okay, so um, tools for effective online teaching. I'm sure you have gone through a lot of webinar session and you know and 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 all those. Um, so I will not really you know uh, go go you know go detail on most of the things. But I want to share. I want to share mostly on some of the pedagogical aspects. I think that's more crucial. Oh yeah, by the way, the slides I will share it in the chat box uh, later, right? Just in case you're wondering. So there are a lot of words about this. We talk about online learning, online teaching, e-learning, remote learning, remote teaching, you know, emergency remote teaching, online distance learning. There's so many terms for the past few, how to put it, for the past few months, especially during the MCO. And a lot of, um, how to put it, a lot of uh, people start to be confused, right? What are we talking about? Is it the same or are they the same? You know, uh, is emergency remote teaching the same as online distance learning and, and whatnot? To me, um, they are all related. Just a matter of the degree of uh, the, 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 the both worlds. If you are using more uh, online part, then it could be distance learning because you are not there. But if you are using a mix of both, that it could be hybrid, it could be blended. Some of you call it flip. These are all quite the same. But I think the critical issue during the MCO is this term, emergency remote teaching. For some area without internet connection or maybe with poor internet connection, uh, we, we kind of label it as emergency remote teaching because that's not something that you used to do it, you know, like especially in primary school. Uh, if you're in secondary school, maybe you're luckier. But uh, most cases, it's called emergency remote teaching because you have to do it in a in a more emergency level, right? 
but there are some people who also call it distant uh, learning or some people call it uh, distant education. Uh, like your platform is called DL, uh, ODL. Uh, I don't know why they call it online distance learning because it's not really distance. Okay? But anyhow, whatever it is, just bear in mind that it's just a matter of the degree of whether you're, you have more online or you have more offline. That's it. But uh, to me, you shouldn't be too, too worried about all the terms. Okay? But I want to ask you this. So what happened during MCO in a way, right? in the context of education. So let's start the ball rolling by getting you to respond to my poll. So can you, if you're on your laptop, you just turn on another, uh, you know, tab. If you don't want to use your laptop, you can use a mobile phone. Just scan. Let me just, uh, wait, okay. Right, okay. Just go to this link, wooklab.com slash 2020. If you have your mobile phone, you can just try to scan it. If you can't, then you just type this. Uh, I will type it in the chat box now. Ooclap.com slash slash 2020. So I hope more people, oh, okay, it doesn't appear as link. So I just put the link in. Not many of you inside here, so you could just probably uh, all of you can participate. Okay. I have about 20 plus here, right? So try your best to participate. So go to this link, wooklab.com slash the last 2020. So what you will see is this one. Let me just show you. Well, some of you are responding now, which is good. Okay, keep it coming. <laughs> so the link is wooclap.com slash Celeste2020. I have about 17 of you inside this chat, inside this room. So far, so good. Occasional okay, no, mental breakdown, I think one only. Still trying to cope, three of you. I think so far, so good is the easy answer. It's like the middle, you know, when you give questionnaire to people, they will go for number three in the middle, right? Because it's like, uh, okay, so far so good, you know, <laughs> that's the easy way out. But I, I was hoping someone would just think I hate it. Uh, so far, no. I think once I said this, some, someone would just take it. But anyhow, uh, good to see some. It's been great. Yeah, I love it so much. Uh, only one, you know, still, a couple of you still trying to cope uh, and all that. But honestly speaking, I think it depends on your locality, right? To me, if you are able to join this session now, means you are in probably in the area where you are luckier, right? Uh, those who cannot join the session like this live, probably they would probably put number six. I hate it because, uh, you know, we all the challenges and all that. Not just you, but also your students, right? Good that it's so far so good, but I know this is a kind of like a politically correct answer. Uh, it's an option for you to choose. I, I shouldn't have put this, but anyway. Uh, at least you are positive about it. Um, the person who put occasional mental breakdown, maybe I could understand why, right? Which we will sh share in a bit. Any more want to respond? I have about 29 in this room. If you don't want to, you can just type in the chat. Yeah, by the way, if you do, want, do not want to respond to this, you can just type in the chat, uh, your option. All right, let's go to the next question, right? Uh, this one is a bit trickier. What makes you happy or satisfied when teaching online? Mm, this one open-ended. You can type whatever you want. So I'm going to give you some time to think and uh, let's see what's your response. What makes you happy, satisfied when teaching online? Or oh, maybe I should, let me just, sorry, let me just. Let me just. Can I, can I hide it? Yes, I can. So let me hide it first so that you don't, you're not influenced by your friend's answer. If you would like to share verbally, you can also let me know. You know, just turn on your mic and then say something. Sometimes it's easier to express, but <laughs> if you don't want to, then just type. Right? You can even type in the chat. I have about 22 now, but same link. Just still go to the same link, wooclap.com. 
slash the last 2020 and then you will get to uh, type out the answer. What makes you happy or satisfied when teaching online? I would love to hear from you really because um, sometimes we assume you're happy but maybe you're not. <laughs> I'm going to give you maybe two more minutes on this. Try your best to, to answer. Let me move this down. Okay. Any more coming in? Only 10 responded, 11 now, 48%. Just, you don't have to give me an essay. I know you have a lot to say sometimes. So, uh, just give me the keywords. Okay, let's see some first. Okay, I'm going to give you the word cloud. There are about 23 who log into the page, but only 11 give their responses. Um, there are about 31 of you in this room. Okay, you can type it out. You don't have to give your name, right? You don't have to give your name. Just type. Let me just put the word cloud. Wow, okay. See a lot of, but I like the fact that you put students, you see, you know, students, the bigger the word means, the more, uh, you know, more, a lot of you actually express it. So let me just put it out. Good. Okay, more of you actually put it up. So, um, but let me go some of the, things. So what makes you happy or satisfied when teaching online? There are two, the main one here. You can even vote for the answers by your friend or your, your, your own answer. But first one is my kids are responding actively to the lesson. That makes you happy, right? If you have 10 people in the class, you would love to have 10 or maybe, uh, well, 30 or whatever, just uh, respond to you actively. When the students responded and sent their computer work, when students send their work, this is similar, right? Task completion, the moment seeing the kids typing on WhatsApp, this is, okay, just by seeing them typing, you're happy already. This is, this is quite easy to be satisfied. Uh, can carry out without leaving home. Okay, yes, sometimes because, you know, your, your home may not have proper internet connection and then you have to get out of the home and, and all that. When students actually participate in the lesson, abundance of resources, when I see students responding excitedly, when my students respond, especially to poor class, flexible and no pressure, easy to do, no noisy classroom. Yeah, I like that part because you don't get students yelling at, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, it's also um, something that kills you in a way. You would love to have that, uh, you would love to have that kind of um, classroom environment at times. But anyhow, but I like the fact that you put things quite similar in a way uh, usually when we ask teachers what makes you happy not just teaching online actually these are the things that you are getting even offline right uh, whatever makes you happier offline you would like that to be replicated online as well for example you want them to be active in the online setting you would well ex expect them to be active in your class too right in your face-to-face -face class it's a bit weird to tell me that I want my student to be active online but actually, in the face-to-face -face mode, they are not even active and then you don't bother, right? Then suddenly when it's online, you want them to be active. You get what I mean? There are a lot of teachers where in the actual classroom setting, they, the students are very passive, just sit and listen. But when it's online, suddenly they hope the students are more active. You know you get what I mean? It's like the contradicting part where you are expecting something which you don't really have it in the offline setting. So uh, these are something for, for us to think about when we are picking tools okay so we're done with this uh, okay you can still give me your responses there are quite a lot here and you can also vote for the thing but i also like the fact that when you say easy to do preparation and flexible and no pressure yeah in a way online learning actually gives you more flexibility in that sense because you get to plan ahead right which is something that you should be doing in an offline setting just that um during um you know mco you you are not bothered with other things sometimes you know all this paperwork and all that you get a bit of reduction in that case so you have more time to to prepare your lessons and all that okay so good good i, I love your responses so far you can also share later if you want i'm going to proceed with my presentation a bit 
So uh, during and after MCO, so I was asking you what happened and then a lot of you say you're happy with your teaching so far, so good and everything, right? So um, these are some of the observations that I, I can kind of uh, summarize in eight points, right? More digital learning content will produce. This one you cannot be denied. There are more videos on YouTube from Malaysia. A year ago, if you type anything about Malaysian syllabus, you get, you get the same, maybe it's from the same people, right? Same set of people. Now, if you Google anything, you get diversity in terms of the same topic, right? This is good because you have to bear in mind, you don't have to worry about, you know, I'm doing the same thing like what other people are doing because different people will have different preference. Some of them may like my style, some of them may like your style, you get what I mean? So you just put it up online so that they get the diversity of choice so they can pick whichever content they like. More virtual meetings like what we're having now, more educators are building online presence, more, more ad YouTuber, all right? Some people are taking advantage of the situation as well, charging for uh, uh, online session and all that, which is fine, right? But uh, have to prioritize the, uh, the main thing. More webinars, but number five is quite true. More, dis more disparity uh, right, and gaps noted in terms of equity and facility and whatnot. You got suddenly schools that you have never heard of appeared on newspapers and all that and uh, things that never happened before, like climbing the trees, uh, crossing the valleys and whatnot that things that maybe happened a lot before this, but you don't really get to hear it. But now this is the time where you get to hear all these things and people start to take notice, right? Yeah, more screen time, more alternative assessment and design. I'm not sure whether it's alternative or not, but um, what I observe, uh, those so-called alternative assessment are still the same, like what you did face-to-face, -face, just that you just change it into online mode, right? That's one thing that we, have, we can talk about. And then more tech comfy. I call it comfy, not tech savvy. Uh, teachers and students. I, I don't really think uh, we have reached the tech savvy yet most of the time because tech savvy means you're really expert in the tools. Like you can really troubleshoot and all that. Most teachers these days, due to this MCO, because of online teaching, you are tech comfy actually. You're more willing to try out tools. You're more willing to do recording. and So you're comfortable with the tech, not really savvy yet because suddenly if anything happened to your tools, you get panic as well because Tech savvy means you, you are able to fix things, you're, you're doing, uh, you know, uh, you can do some coding and whatnot. But in, in this sense, I think we are okay by just being tech comfy, good enough, right? Even students as well. And also more stressful and confusing moments. I think just like what you mentioned just now, uh, more occasional mental breakdowns because of, for example, when you do classes, nobody turn up and all that. So these are the issues that uh, happen. And I will be sharing some of the things, but I want you to bear in mind this. I share this a lot in, in a lot of sessions, but I love to repeat this. Uh, um, how to put it? Um, losing control, right? Because in, in, a, in the normal teaching, in face-to-face, -face, uh, teacher are in control of the classroom setting. You get to kind of control the classroom environment in, in a way because students are all there and you can actually grab them or pinpoint them, you know, start to focus on them, whoever has problem. But now, because of online and remote learning, uh, you know, mode, this kind of um, situation, we have diverse learning spaces with various conditions. So actually, losing that kind of control is not about you can't control the student anymore, but it's because of the variable, you know. Parents start to come in or their guardians start to come in, the condition of the... Uh, the classroom, you know, uh, sorry, the, the, ro the home, right? Uh, the condition of siblings, right? There are a lot of issues. And a lot of time when, as teacher, we show that kind of frustration during online teaching, the student also will mirror it because they are also facing that kind of frustration. So I hope you realize that uh, losing control is okay in this, in this period of time. And you shouldn't be too harsh to yourself and also to the student because you have to imagine like what you're doing now. If, if, um, you know, if I were to control you in terms of how you log into this page, you know, how you should behave and all that, I'll be very frustrated because you are at your home, right? You can do whatever you want. You want to sit on the couch. You want to drink your Milo. You want to listen to something else. I can't control you fully because you are at your home, right? So same, same scenario in, in, um, in the online teaching part. So we're going to try some of the tools today. And I would lo love to let you know that um, I just want to remind you about this. And I love this quote from Steve Jobs. And he said, technology is nothing, right? What's important is that you have faith in people and that they are basically good and smart. And if, they, if you give them tools, 
they'll do wonderful things with that. And I believe all the teachers, well, in Sarawak or even in, in the whole Malaysia, um, we have a lot of good teachers. And if you give them good tools, you have to believe that they can do wonderful things. Sometimes it's a bit demotivating to, to hear when, you know, teachers are given tools, but they just refuse to use it or, uh, you know, the the upper level start to label teachers for being lazy for not doing anything at home and all that so these are not encouraging at this time and we should have faith in all teachers that they are able to do wonderful things and today i would like to share with you some of the tips for you to use some of the tools so there are many tools actually out there my own list i have close to like uh 500 plus tools but of course you're not going to go through every single tool but I want you to remind yourself. Every time you do online teaching, remind this 4C. Remind yourself of this 4C. So the first one is captivating content. And then you have uh, creative activities, continuous assessment, and constructive feedback. Remind yourself these 4 Cs when you are choosing the tools. The tools are supposed to help you with these 4 Cs. You have tools that can uh, you know, help you with the uh, content, right? right? Captivating content. So you can do creative activities or even assessments and, and feedback. So these are, these are crucial for you to understand. Um, not just simply, oh, my friend is using this. I want to use it as well. Maybe, you know, it might not work in your condition. You have to you know, evaluate all these tools based on what you want to achieve, right? First one is captivating uh, content. Now, I, I have done, uh, uh, I just completed one full research for all the teaching con uh, content for the past few months. I mean, during this period where we are all doing online teaching. Uh, in some cases, in secondary schools uh, and primary schools, you have uh, more teachers producing content which are, which are uploaded to YouTube. And some did not uh, allow public viewing, meaning they unlisted it. So what happened was I also managed to get into uh, some teachers, you know, ask them to share with me with their, their, their resources and all that. And then I, when I view at the analytics, the first one, the first style, the screen recording style is the most highly watched and most highly rated. You'll be surprised. So don't be bogged down by this idea of you need green screen, you know, you need high tech animation. Don't be bothered about that. What matters is the screen recording style. And what I noticed as well, it's not just about uh, the style of the video. It's actually the way you deliver it. Ultimately, it's you, not really about the technology. I've seen uh, some teachers spend so long, like one week to produce a three-minute video using green screen, you know, with green screen, with all kind of animation and only 10 views. You get what I mean? You spend so long, so much time doing all this thing and then only 10 students view your, uh, your video and then you get frustrated. But when you ask the student, the student will tell you why. They will tell you, your video too crowded, you know, too cluttered with so many things, I don't get it. That is why there is a famous uh, website, I think you have heard this, uh, Han Academy. The videos are all screencast recording style and then the views are millions, right? You get a lot of millions. And uh, recently when I posted up on my, uh, my social media account about this Han Academy thing, I was so shocked that, uh, <laughs> A lot of Malaysian students actually depend on Han Academy's video to learn science subject, you know, uh, chemistry, even English and all that. You know, they, they depend a lot, even though Han Academy are all in English. You get what I mean? Um, they, all content are in English, but these students, they may be weak in English, but they are viewing this video and then you help them to understand. And then all the feedback was like, I can understand this uh, video lecture more than what my teacher told me in two hours. Things like that. You know, this kind of feedback is good. So it means that don't, don't be too worried about your animation. Go for screen recording too. And there are some screen recording tools here. Uh, you have Loom, you have uh, Screencast-O-Matic, OpenBot, CH, and Fluid VD. So I'll be going through the, this one. I like this last one. This is a new newcomer. Right. But they are very good because it comes with an editing option. If you use Loom, when you record, you cannot edit much. Flute, uh, well, I don't know why they call it Flute because I was teasing this. It appears during this time, so it's flu, right? It's like <laughs> flu with, I don't know why, it's like COVID kind of thing. Anyway, but it's quite interesting to see how flu, flu with can help you. Most important thing is when you do your videos, print a recording style, do not repeat what you can 
deliver during life, but or focus on the key concept. Also, fill with questions that then trigger them to think. Always, if you watch or if you analyze Han Academy's video, they, it doesn't go by today, I would like to teach you A, B, C. It doesn't start that way. It start with, um, what is uncountable now? Start with question, right? Is money countable or uncountable? Do you have money or money? Something like, you start with question, all right? And then when you attempt to answer it using your screen recording style, the student get more understanding because it starts with a question for them to think. And then they try to get the answer from your sharing. So if you start today, I will tell you what is countable and all uncountable now. Countable now is, it's the same like reading the, the textbook, right? So your video may not be that uh, uh, good. So, okay. This is one example. You can go to Han Academy. In fact, I can show you now. If you go to Han Academy, this is somewhere for you to start to learn how to produce video as simple as this, scribbling part. No need to use fancy, uh, you know, fancy gadgets and all that. I'm going to share my... Uh, I'm going to try stop share and then share a new one. Okay, should be this one. Can you see it? Can you see it, right? Han Academy, okay. Just in case, just now I didn't appear. Okay, um, so, so as you can see, uh, these are some of the sample. And how do you produce this kind of video? If I, this is just a two minutes. I'm going to introduce you grammar and content. This is, this is the uh, sample, right? How do you produce this type of video, right? You don't need fancy uh, software, but probably if you can invest on a writing tablet, that would be good. You don't have to get iPad if, if it's too expensive. Get a, get, a, get a writing tablet where you can just get it from uh, Shopee, I think. There are quite a number of uh, China brands. Uh, Hui On is one because it's quite similar to Wacom, uh, Wacom uh, brand. Wacom is slightly more expensive, but if you're willing to spend, go ahead. But having that writing pad uh, with you will allow you to write smoother. That's it, right? Uh, but if you don't want to invest on that, then you can, you can probably use your phone, right? But it's a bit small screen. You can connect your uh, recording to your phone but then start recording, but it's a bit small, so not so friendly. I do advise you to, to invest on a writing pad if you're doing a lot of scribbling. And sometimes students love to see you scribble because it, it creates the sense of uh, teaching presence, right? If, because if you put too many animation, like all some teachers, they use this cartoon and animation and everything, so they actually stop watching when they notice that they don't get any, any, any input. You know, they just watch some, some uh, animation and then they stop. But if you start to scribble, they will wait. It's like you do math, right? They will wait for you to do the steps and things like that. So how do you do this kind of video? There's a tool called OpenBot. Um, I'm going to start OpenBot a bit. So if you go download OpenBot, just go to OpenBot CH. You will get something like this, the one that you're seeing on my screen now. You can see, right, the black screen, okay? Just in case I short slightly, take talk to myself. Uh, this is, um, how to put it? This is, this is open board, right? What happened is open board, this software is fully free and it comes with a recording, direct recording. You don't need a third party tool to record it. What happened is if you go to open board setting down here and if you click podcast, I'm just quickly demonstrating because I'll give you a list of video on all the tutorial, which I did on my own. So, but something for you to try. So if you click podcast here, you will see a button to record, even though the name is podcast, actually it's, it's recording the whole thing. So if you have your writing tablet, like now I have my own uh, writing tablet. I bought it for only 188, 188 only. <laughs> it's quite cheap compared to other brand. But here, here, if you just, Choose any color you like, you can start. So you can start clicking this recording button. If I click recording button, and then I start to write like, today we're gonna to learn about nouns. So what do you know about noun? For example, so you can say like, noun, you have proper noun or, you know, uh, common nouns and all that. So you can start doing your, do your scribble, and then you can even draw whatever you want, blah, 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 I mean, just short one. So the moment I click press stop here, if I click stop, right? If I go to my desktop now, just stop this screen for a while. If I go to my desktop now, 
I would see this, which is my video. And then I start to write like, today we're going to talk about now. So what do you know about So now? it's done. You know, your video is done immediately without any... Say like, now... Without any, you know, you don't need a third party software to record it. So you get your video done uh, immediately. If you like to try, if you don't believe me, try to do some video this style and then do another style and then ask the student to watch and see the feedback from the students. All right. Of course, don't, uh, you know, don't, don't do the same thing like over and over again. Do the same topic. Try to do other topics. All right. Okay. These are some of the tips for you for that one. If you do not want to use OpenBot as uh, you know, this cribbing type, you can use PowerPoint. You can also do your PowerPoint. If you don't want to record directly from PowerPoint, you can use this uh, fluid video just now, this one, this website. You can go to flu, fluvit, right? fluvit, fluvid.com. It's free, totally free. Just add this on Chrome, right? And then you can see what happened here is like you can show your PowerPoint and then your, you can have your face explaining. If you don't want your face, you can, you can turn it off. So you don't have, uh, you can turn off the camera. So if you look at the, the, the free account, this is totally free. You don't have to pay. The good thing about Fluvid as compared to Loom, I can show you side by side Loom. If you go to Loom, another famous one, not Zoom, but Loom. A lot of teachers using this to, to record their videos. Uh, Loom, if you go to the pricing, if you compare the free account for, for Loom, it's up to five minutes only per video. And then you can up to 100 videos. But for Fluvid, you can up to 50 videos, but max one hour duration. So at least you can exceed the five minute a bit, right? But best practices is still don't, don't do too long. I mean, five to six minutes will be just nice. But one thing good about Fluvid, it, it comes with editing recording. You can edit the recording. You can add, you can cut, you can do your uh, trimming. You can add some uh, something. And most importantly for both, no watermark. Some software come with a big watermark it's very disturbing sometimes, you know, like, you know, whatever, all this big watermark. And so it's very disturbing. But for Fluvid and uh, Loom, no watermark, right? So you can, you can, um, how to put it? Well, you can use this to record a lot of video actually, and you can try it out, right? Okay. So that's the uh, content part, right? So of course, videos are, why do, why do I say videos are key? A lot of teachers, may think that, okay, I upload my videos and then, you know, students are not really watching it or don't really appreciate it. Don't worry. They will watch it anyhow. And then the good thing is, because the videos are up there or you can, you can put it unlisted on YouTube or anywhere you like, the good thing is it is still accessible anywhere. So let's say they don't have connection now. Right now, they cannot stream to your class on Google Meet or wherever because you have it in the form of video, right? So maybe when they travel to town or when they have the chance to, uh, you know, when they have the chance to get connected and whatsoever, they can download it immediately and then they go back home. This is what happened to most teachers in rural areas or remote areas anyway, right? Because you don't access the internet. You go to a town area where there is, you try to do whatever you can, you try to download all this material and then you go back home. It's like that, right? But if you do it online only, no videos for students to download, how on earth are they going to get your input, right? So videos are quite strong and... Um, uh, learning, learning through videos also help uh, as compared to text, you know, like written text or you know, only on textbook and all that. But of course, there are still a lot of issues with this in terms of certain area, but at least your videos are there. I always say to my teachers or even my, my colleagues, your videos are there. Don't, don't delete it. Just keep it there, right? Because you don't know when you're going to work. You know, sometimes only 10 you now, suddenly next year, you know, you have more views because you can you can reuse some of the con uh, content that you have produced. So don't feel demotivated when you feel like your videos are not being watched or whatever. So just keep on producing, which is very good for, for the uh, content makers. And I think I would appreciate more uh, content making from Stroud teachers as well, because we rely a lot on, uh, on the other side. So you might want to produce more because you, people need to see the scenario in Sarawak, you know, your, your, your students and all that, and your examples more localized, right? Uh, second part, the second C is creative and fun, I call it, uh, your activities. I think in, in terms of language teaching, like in this language teaching, we are slightly more flexible. We are not uh, tied up with, um, well, a very rigid kind of uh, content or syllabus, not like uh, sciences and all that, because and it, we are borderless anyway, because you can use anything. You can teach 
science in English, right? You can teach history in English. You can teach anything using the language because your focus is the language, not so much of the content, right? Use any topic which is interesting to your students, even about football or anything, but the bottom line is still about the language aspect. Uh, try not to uh, focus too much on the, you know, the syllabus in terms of the categories of uh, grammar or, or, you know, all these skills. Use that as a guide, but your content topic can be anything, right? Try not to limit it to whatever is provided. You know, uh, let's say the topic is environment, suddenly you just follow whatever the textbook gives you, which is environment. You can always use other, other uh, topics because this is based on research as well. We notice. You know, number four here, go for variety. Repeating the same thing several times, so you know, uh, should be as well. Creates uh, boredom. Means um, your style is the same, you know, uh, things are the same. You need to have a lim uh, element of surprise. And because it, this, it generates do dopamine, we call it. And um, dopamine is like um, the excitement, right? Right now, you, you might have a bit of dopamine now because you're seeing new things, but suddenly the dopamine will drop because it feels the same, right? Same thing like students in learning. This is brain science because if you don't inject this dopamine or generate this all the time, they get bored. And then imagine if you're doing the same thing over and over again. I have a few friends who approach me, Kiman, can you observe me teaching? And then when I observe for four or five weeks, I told my friend, this a few, not, not one, but quite a number. I said, you are, uh, you know, you're repeating the same style over and over again. So no wonder your students are not active. You get I me? Mean? Because your style is the same and then you don't put them into a, a situation where they need to be active, right? So put them into, a, you know, an, a, a spot or, you know, provide opportunity for students to be active, right? If you, if you are doing like what I'm doing now, blah, 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 with all this fact, all right? I'm sure your student will, you know, will, will fall asleep. Uh, if you start to ask them to do something, can we stand up now, you know, let's do some uh, activities uh, or... Can we fold some papers, get a piece of paper and do something and then they, they'll be active, right? I want to share about dopamine because this one, uh, like what Dr. Helen said, any kind of novelty or excitement drives up dopamine in the brain and dopamine is something we love. This is why sometimes you'll be surprised why some students will attend certain classes but not yours. Even though the teacher may not look as handsome or as pretty as you because um, when they get that constant uh, dopamine uh, from different, different sessions, they start to develop this love. It's like how we fall in love with someone. We may not like the look, we may not like the thing, but because of the excitement that we get every time we see this person, we develop that kind of love that you know, we generate. So, uh, <laughs> like, like I told my, my colleague as well, uh, it would be weird, you know, like we have like eight to 10 class and 10 to 12. The student will join only eight to 10, but we'll skip 10 to 12 occasionally. And then when you ask the student, the student will say, no point for me to join the 10 to 12 class because the lecturer just read from the slides, for example. This is from my education point of view. So you have to constantly have that kind of, uh, but it's tiring, I know. It's, it's really tiring. So you don't, you don't have to do this kind of uh, online teaching or online sharing all the time. You can supplement it with the, uh, the video. So when you have a chance to go online like this, spend about 30 to 45 minutes or the most is maybe 40 minutes just to get in touch with them, you know, just follow up something, just, uh, just give some feedback, that will be sufficient and do some activities which can trigger the understanding, okay? Which is, this, what, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, don't go beyond 45 minutes sometimes, um, not sometimes, the average, right? Um, I know we get carried away when we go online, just like how we, we teach in class. We get very, uh, how to put it, we get very excited to share and then we can go on and on. Like now, you know, I can go on and on for two hours, for example. But try to limit it to about 45 minutes. This is the structure. Uh, lead in activities. Get to know, you know, the situation. Go for uh, main content, whatever you want to focus. Pick one or two major one only. Then go for activities. Recap and then assessment again. Supplement every session with assessment or reflection. doesn't have to be graded. It can be non-graded. As long as you give them chance to show you that they have understood certain things. All right? These are some sample I use. This is Padlet. Um, there are some tools here, which you, after, when you get your, uh, this slide, you can go and try. Genially is also quite famous now. I can show you the Genially panel here. If you have not tried Genially, you can go to this website, Genially. Uh, you can create a lot of things in Genially, right? You have gamification presentation. If you click gamification here, 
There's so many things you can do. You can do escape room. You can do, uh, if you scroll down here, there's quizzes. What kind, a, a, lot of, a lot of quizzes. Uh, the good thing is you can share and then the student can come in together. They can work on the, uh, the, the tool together. So this is one uh, good tool to try. And a lot of uh, teachers are using this already, starting to use this. So you can try. But it's a bit bandwidth intensive, meaning uh, maybe not so suitable for rural or remote area, but one thing good is you can download it as a PDF, as a worksheet as well, if you need to distribute it in the form of PDF or maybe you know in a different uh, mode, like print out or whatever, okay? This is something for you to try. Uh, again, everything will be shared in the, the list, so you can just find it, the tutorial, everything, all right? Oops, sorry. Uh, Wakelet is also quite popular now. This is sample of Wakelet. Now, when, when you use a tool like Wakelet like this, you don't have to create that Wakelet for yourself. You can also ask students to create the Wakelet. They just have to go to wakelet.com. It's free. Just register one. So it can be like a portfolio, right? You can just organize everything and then put the link in. If I do the editing now, I can just add my content here. I can just click add and then I can do at whatever I want. So I can give my text. So you can use this as one of the assignment or one of the tasks for your students. So instead of doing on Google Docs, they can also do, do it on Wakelet. So they show you the progression maybe. So you can, let's say you ask them to find five articles or you know, five newspaper articles or whatever, they can put it here and then write a summary of each. So they can write the summary directly here. So they can add text. So newspaper link and then summary. Newspaper link and summary. Instead of putting it in Microsoft uh, Word, for example, or Google Doc. So, and then it's more engaging because they can also add videos, some interactive content, right? You can even ask them to, to put in videos and all that. So these are some alternatives for you to, to think about activities that can engage your learners, okay? All right, next one is this sample. This is also a mini sample. Next one is continuous assessment. This is quite crucial. And the third C is continuous assessment in a way we try our best to have some formative assessment every session. When we have the chance to go online or when we have the chance to, to, to engage with our learners, try to do a bit of formative assessment uh, to diagnose problem and weakness, not to punish. In a way, I know a lot of teachers during this period uh, shared a lot of worksheet uh, or uh, activities on WhatsApp and Telegram, right? Snap the, snap the picture, put it on uh, WhatsApp or Telegram, ask them to answer. This is, this is one way of doing formative assessment, but because it's not engaging enough, you will, you will see the drop in the submission, right? You will see the drop in submission. So you might want to figure out other ways of introducing uh, formative assessment. There are quite a number of tools. You have Quizlet, Quizzes, Kahoot. I think some of this you have learned it a lot, Google Form and uh, Telegram. But it also comes with the, uh, the, the, the way you do the assessment as well, right? Because if you just snap the picture from a textbook or from the revision book, it's going to feel the same, right? You might want to transfer it to somewhere or maybe reword it and make it fun, you know, change the contact a bit, relate to your students, and that would make it even more meaningful. And then, of course, you have to make it with the proper rubrics because students actually don't like any assessment where you don't have any proper rubrics. It's like um, they are not sure whether whether they're doing it right or doing it wrong. A student actually dislike that. So if, if they do it once or twice, and they realize that they are not getting any uh, proper feedback, which is related to the next C, they stop doing it because they will say, what's the point of doing this? You know, I don't get anything. I don't know why, whether I'm right or wrong, you know, things like that. So you have to always support with the next C, which is this um, meaningful feedback, constructive feedback, all right? But this is one sample uh, of uh, using um, WhatsApp. You can still give meaningful tasks in WhatsApp, but I would love you to use the tag hashtag. I shared this many times as well, but hashtag will be useful because it's easier for you to track the, the thing because when you have so many chats in WhatsApp, you, get, you, lose, you lose track of all the things, right? So you might want to use the hashtag. Ask them to do hashtag for every answer. And then uh, when you search, you can just search for the task, right? This is quizzes we will try later. But most importantly is this one, give meaningful feedback. I know it's hard for, for, for English language teaching. I think the hardest part to give feedback would be writing. When you ask students to write essay, when you ask students to, um, to write you know, any, any report, it takes time to read through and give feedback, I know. But 
uh, that is the most meaningful one actually. So if, if you can, probably instead of asking them to write a whole long essay and then you mark them together, you might want to do part by part. So maybe let's say this week, I just want to see introduction. Can you submit introduction? So you look at introduction and then you mark and then look at the point, for example. Do a bit, uh, bit by bit because online is a bit hard for, for you to mark everything, you know, one whole go. But if you have a very small class size, I do encourage you to give individualized feedback because uh, anything without feedback, students tend to, to take it for granted. In fact, plagiarism also go higher when there's no feedback. Because, you know, imagine if they do something and then you keep commenting like, this is plagiarized, you know, uh, it's not good, blah, blah, blah. You know, they will try their best to improve if they want to. Lah. I'm sure you do get students who, who don't give, um, you know, uh, any... Uh, weight on whatever you gave but it's fine but you, you try your best to still give the feedback okay you can still give a general one to everyone if you notice the the pattern is recurring or and it's minor for example use of certain words uh, use of punctuation for example if you see a lot of students are doing the same thing then you, you instead of doing individualized you can just give a general comment for everyone and using google doc is one good part voice notes in whatsapp and also Flipgrid is also good. But Flipgrid, again, bandwidth intensive, only for certain part, especially for speaking. If you're teaching and speaking, Flipgrid is a good way to, to track the ability to speak, right? Or if you can't, then you can use the Telegram or WhatsApp voice note to test their um, speaking skills, for example, right? So this is sample so that you, you know, this is Google Doc, you make use of the command tool. And then like this one, so they can come in and then they will respond to your, your command and all that, right? Oh, yeah, another one is Discord. This is a new one. Uh, I'm not sure if you can try, but I, based on my experience, this is better than Telegram because of the bandwidth. Actually, it consumes less bandwidth than Telegram. If you have, if you have been, been using Telegram for quite some time, you might want to try Discord. What happened is in Discord, you can do this. In Telegram, you cannot do the labeling. Like Telegram, one whole group, then everyone enter, enter the group. In this one, and you can actually do the labeling. Like unit one, you can even have assignment and all that. So you can try out Discord. Uh, the app, the mobile app version and also the web versions are quite quite low weight. I mean, it doesn't really consume a lot of uh, bandwidth. So you might want to try. But again, this may be unfamiliar to some of your students. So the, the comfort level will be lower. So you might want to spend some time introducing them the, the two. Okay. All right. This is Flipgrid. Okay. Flipgrid. I think you have seen Flipgrid before because it's part of the MOEDL as well. But uh, good for speaking, actually. Give them a task, like one minute task um, will be enough. Uh, ask them to speak and then they record. Because it's using mobile phone, then it's easier to upload. Okay. Ah, it's quiz time. <laughs> I was reminded by the host that it's not 50 ringgit, um, it's not 50 ringgit cash, but it's 50 ringgit token. But you, never mind, it's still 50 ringgit anyway. <laughs> so what happened is, all of you here, if, you're one, if you want to win this cash, we have three prizes to give away. You just have to answer this simple quiz. I'm going to start this quiz now. I'm sure you have, you have heard of quizzes. I love quizzes more than Kahoot because um, of the diagnosis of the analytics. I love the analytics uh, as compared to Kahoot, but you can always use this on your own. I'm going to start this. So if you want to participate, just go to this link, joinmyquiz.com, type in the code. All right, I'm going to close this good job. Uh, okay. Just in time for us before we end the session. Any, how many, I'm not, I'm not sure how many of you want to join here. I have about, how many inside here? 38 minus 2 is about 36. Let's go to joinmyquiz.com. I'm going to copy link address. Make sure you remember who you are because you need to give your name to me or maybe put it in the chat later if you if you are the winner so that we can track you down. All right. 218-980. All right. Very simple five questions based on what I shared with you just now. I think it shouldn't take longer than five minutes. Hmm. Any more? Five now.
some are still trying to join the, the okay we have three prizes of 50 ringgit uh three right uh Sazlin? three right okay don't miss this chance <laughs> Okay. Any more coming in before I start? Okay, come on, come on. Any more? I have 13 now, I think. Okay. King of Gun. Okay. Any more? I give you 30 seconds, then I start. We have 14 here. 14 people here out of 38. Any more? No, huh? Okay, one. Counting one, two, three. I will start this quiz already. Okay, starting. Okay, one, two, three. The questions are on your screen, not my screen. Okay. The question are on your screen, eh? on your own screen. Look at the question on your screen. Don't rush, don't rush. <laughs> okay. Wow. Some are lost. Maybe connection is so good. <laughs> the question are on your screen. So right now is Asia number one. Let's see if let's see if the rest of you can catch up. <laughs> Good, 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 good. LJ, Viviana, and Lex. Okay. Corporate is catching up. Patrick. <laughs> Connection slow, I guess. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow, last minute catch up, huh? Corporate. Okay. Any more? Some are still answering. You see, quizzes, if you notice, it's not like Kahoot. Uh, quizzes is self-driven, right? Self-driven. And you, you, get, you get to go on your own pace, right? And the faster, of course, the faster you are, then, you know, uh, it's not like Kahoot where I have to go question by question. So those of you can still answer, right? You can still, you see, even though you are slow, you can still answer, which is good. And then it doesn't demotivate those who are, a bit slow in terms of connection and all that. So you can still do it. But I, I think, um, yeah, I think we have the winner already. The first three, Asia, uh, Viviana, Crawford. So congratulations to the three of you because you won the... So if I end this, if you notice when I click end, right? Then it will tell you the, the three winners. So this is like something just of... For students, they love this. Love to see this, of course, right? Same like for you. So you see, good that everyone get hundred percent, right? The top four get actually hundred percent. Uh, what I like about quizzes is, is this one. Like I told you, you get the analytics, right? You get the analytics. You get to see which questions have the most problem. Like the first one, it's formative assessment. I didn't really mention this, but it's actually on the slide. <laughs> All right. So this is considered as a trick question. But I think a lot of you got it right. Uh, uh, Kahoot is based on gamification. Open board is screen casting, recording, and then the common is dopamine. So I, I mean, the answer is not important. Just to show you the, the interface of the thing. So make sure, Azia, Viviana, and Crawford. I don't know whether this is your real name or not. Uh, contact us. Those who cannot connect, I'm sorry. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Those who, those who are slow, uh, don't worry. We, we have other chances for you to win, okay? All right, I think that's all for me. So uh, I would love if you can get in touch with me. You can also 
go to my YouTube channel and also my e-learning Zev link where you get to see a lot of tools. I have more than and a lot is actually. Uh, but the, my video also shared on how to use some of the tools that I mentioned today, like Loom, Open Board and all that. Okay. I think that's all from me. If you have any question, you can still email me or put it in the chat and then I'll respond later. Lah. Okay. Or email me directly. The email is this one. All right. That's all. Thank you. Back to Sazlin. Okay, so, so thank you so much, um, Mr. Shrakiman, and thank you to all the participants. So before we end the session, oh, sure. uh, I would like to take a good photo. Okay, okay. stay for a while. Okay. So everyone uh, has to turn on your camera. For yes, that. please, please on I your mean, camera. No. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for attending as well, before I forget to say this. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, one more. One, two, one, two, three. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. All the best. Yeah.